Hi everyone and welcome to an example video on the change of variables formula. Today's example is a little bit more straightforward and it's designed to get you used to working with this result. Here we're going to use the given transformation x equals 2u plus v and y is u plus 2v to evaluate a double integral. We're integrating over the region r bounded between the lines y equals 2x, y equals 1 half x, and y equals 3 minus x. To solve this problem, we know we're going to have to use our change of variables formula. It says that we can convert our integral over r into an integral in terms of u and v. We're now integrating over the transformed region in the uv plane, which we'll have to figure out. We're going to replace our x and y using the expressions involving u and v. So in this case, 2u plus v and u plus 2v. And finally, we multiply by the absolute value of the Jacobian. Okay, so we have lots to do over here on the right-hand side. But let's go ahead and start with the Jacobian. That's not too bad. The Jacobian, partial xy over partial uv, is defined as the determinant of the matrix partial x by partial u, partial y by partial u, partial x by partial v, partial y by partial v. Using my descriptions of x and y in terms of u and v, I can write down these derivatives. I should get the determinant of well, partial x by partial u, that would give me 2, partial y by partial u is 1, partial x by partial v is 1, and partial y by partial v is 2. My determinant is then 2 times 2 minus 1 times 1, I have a Jacobian of 3. As a reminder, we're interested in the absolute value of our Jacobian. Ours is already positive though, so no further work is required. Next, we need to see what our region R looks like in the UV plane after we make this type of transformation. If we can find out our region, we'll be able to determine the bounds on our integral. As a reminder, in this question we're integrating over the region R bounded between the lines y equals 2x, y equals 1 half x, and y is 3 minus x. I've plotted that triangular region for you here. And now you can see why we're doing this change of variables. This region's pretty gross. It's not type 1, it's not type 2. I don't really want to integrate over it. Hopefully it looks a little bit nicer after we've applied this transformation. To figure out the transformed region, we need to see what these lines look like after we change x and y into u and v. So let's look at them one at a time. I'll start with the line y equals 2x. y equals 2x. If I replace y with u plus 2v, I have u plus 2v on the right, and that's supposed to be equal to 2x. Well, x is 2u plus v. If I simplify this, I get u plus 2v is 4u plus 2v. I can throw out those 2v terms and move one of my u's to the other side to get 3u is equal to 0, but that must mean that u is 0. Ah, very nice. My line y equals 2x got mapped to the line u equals 0 in the uv plane. Very, very simple line. Let's see if we get just as lucky with our other lines. We'll consider y equals 1 half x. Now I replace y with u plus 2v, and I replace x with 2u plus v. When I simplify, I get u plus 2v equals u plus half v. This time I throw out the u's. Ooh, I think it's going to work out again. Subtracting half v on both sides, I get 3 halves v is equal to 0, and therefore, v is 0. Oh, this is awesome. It looks like I have two lines in my xy plane that are getting mapped to two very simple lines in my uv plane. My region is simplifying. Lastly, we have to check the line y equals 3 minus x. y equals 3 minus x. By using my descriptions of x and y, I get u plus 2v is 3 minus 2u plus v. Now I can rewrite that as 3 minus 2u minus v. And maybe I'll move my v to the left and my u to the right. That gives me 3v is 3 minus 3u. 
I'll divide by 3 to get v is 1 minus u. Okay, so my third line gets mapped to the line v is 1 minus u in the uv plane. Let's sketch this region in the uv plane and set up our integral. On the last slide, we saw how the boundary of r changes with our transformation. In the uv plane, our new region can be described using the lines u equals 0, v equals 0, and v is 1 minus u. So let's start by graphing u equals 0. That's going to be my v-axis. Looks something like this. I also have the line v equals 0, which will be my u-axis. And then I have the line v equals 1 minus u. That's a line with slope minus 1 and y-intercept 1. So it looks something like this. Oh, well now this is beautiful. Our region is enclosed by these three lines. It's this triangular region you see in the lower left corner of my quadrant 1. This is our UV. You should be a little bit excited here because our old region was this skewed triangle that was neither type 1 nor type 2. But this new region, R U V, is actually both. It's type 1 and it's type 2. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my integral by treating R U V as a region of type 1. My change of variables formula tells me that this integral, the one that I'm after, is really the integral over R U V. So in this case, u goes from 0 to 1, v goes from 0 to 1 minus u. I should replace x and y in my integrand using their definitions in terms of u and v. If you'll recall, x was 2u plus v, and y was u plus 2v. I multiply by the absolute value of my Jacobian, the absolute value of 3, and since I'm integrating this as a region of type 1, I have dv du. I can simplify this expression, pull out the 3, the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 1 minus u, of minus u minus 5v dv du. At this point, our integral is in a form that we can actually evaluate using all the basic techniques that we learned last week. So I'm not going to work through the details, but I'll let you check you should get a final answer of minus 3. Now I know it was a lengthy calculation, but the point is this change of variables formula allowed us to evaluate an integral over a gross region by transforming it into a region that was much nicer. And these problems will also get faster with practice. Stay tuned for the next example.